Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm going to go over some modifications for the JJRC X1, the very popular JJRC X1 brushless, very affordable mini quadcopter that's really good sport flyer. And a um, couple of modifications I'm going to do today are showing you how to kind of do a light mod on this in combination with uh, FPV camera mod. This is an FPV camera from a different quadcopter and also how to extend the range a little bit on this one as well. But anyway, uh, let's get started here. So first of all, I'm gonna go through the light mod and uh, this one's been done before by some other people. Originally, I was gonna go ahead and put these strip LED lights on here. This is an LED strip where you can cut it and you can do three at a time. And I was originally gonna have them kind of go like this on the outside of the arms here so they had a really good lighting. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, these wouldn't light I wanted to use the existing wires in here. Unfortunately, when I put my voltmeter on here, these are only two volts and wouldn't power these ones here. These these LEDs require, uh, the 7.4 volt would light them, but I don't think they'll light up with anything under five volts. So I scratched that idea, and so I went ahead and just uh, did a mod where you can extend the LEDs down here, below the arms here. Uh, unfortunately, the X1 has a really bad problem with lighting. The LEDs are tucked way up inside this little collar here and you can barely see them when you're flying. So what some people have done and what I've done here is just basically uh, when you take off the top cover, let me just go over that really quick, how you take off the top, top, top cover just in case um, you guys are, some of you are very new at taking things apart and don't know really what to do. Anyway, um, you're gonna take off the screws here we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws in the center area and then one screw on each end here. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 screws. So it should be around 14 screws in, in total. Um, you don't necessarily have to take off these screws either. These are for the landing gear, which I've taken off. Makes it a little bit easier to work on if you take off the landing gear when you're doing this mod. But anyway, all you're essentially doing is taking off all those screws, taking this off. You can see I actually might mention it now that I've actually taken off that little top piece the little fake top piece here, all you need to do to take this off is actually just grip it and twist it as hard as you can and kind of break the glue bond and then it will just twist right off. And this is, uh, you know, it's like three grams, three or four grams, so it's gonna save you some weight if you take this off. It's just for cosmetic looks. So I took that off and I just put a little piece of foam in here. This is a hole that goes all the way through. So um, for better cooling, went ahead and just put a little, just kind of super glue it in, a little piece of foam here, some breathable foam, just to give it maybe a little bit more heat dissipation and uh, gives it maybe a sleeker look like this and a little bit less weight. So anyway, once you take this guy off here, um, you can go ahead and access the internals here. And first off, what I did was I noticed that the antenna, this is the receiver antenna here, this gray this gray wire running across the arm here. And initially this antenna wire was actually tucked up inside right here, um, close to the battery, close to all these circuit boards and stuff. So what I did was I just basically took it out of here and put it in the arm and just tacked it down with some hot glue. And bringing it kind of away from the circuitry and stuff will actually, and putting it out on the arm here should give it um, better range. And then what I noticed is where the antenna is soldered onto the receiver board, it was really kind of loose and flopping around. I didn't want that to break the connection. So I just went ahead and put a glob. I'd recommend this too for you guys to do is go ahead and put a little bit glob of hot glue on here just to kind of hold everything down. So uh, when it does kind of move around and when you are moving it, if you decide to do this, it doesn't break the connection here. Getting back to the lighting, all you need to do is uh, the lights the LED lights are just set in these little recesses. They're just pushed down in there initially. So you just pull them out and you'll have that LED light. Then you take your drill or whatever you have that's a, just a little bit larger than the LED lights and uh, just drill through that hole. You're really taking off only less than a millimeter of material all the way around. Um, just enough for the light to kind of squeeze down through and then you just basically push the light all the way through have it pop out and then what i did is just take a little bit of super glue and um 
just put the super glue around the very end of the light and then push it back in how you want it. You can actually position it angled if you wanted to. You could angle it out a little bit more. Or um, I just put it basically at the very edge of the back of it so it has the most protruding light as possible. So I did that to all four and it seems to be working very good. The lighting is way better than stock. You can see here, I'll go ahead and plug it in. And you can see how much better the lighting is. Really, when it was recessed up in that little original recess in the arm, you could just barely see it. It was like kind of like this. And then the only way you could see it is when it was like pointing right at you from underneath. So this way, at least you can see from all different angles and uh, should be way much better for lighting purposes. Do be careful when you're um, putting this thing back together. I did notice that one of my wires, actually this wire right here for the motor, from the factory was actually smashed into this screw. So when you're taking this apart, double check all your wiring. And when you are putting it back together, make sure that all the wiring is pushed aside and nicely tucked away, away from these screw holes here. Otherwise you're gonna have a pinch wire and possibly some problems. Okay, last but not least is the FPV camera mod here. This, this uh, quadcopter actually, I'm not sure if there is one on the market yet, but it does have a FPV camera port here on the bottom. So you have the option to put in your own FPV camera. This here, this is an actually uh, FPV camera from the Liddy RC L6 Hexacopter. I'm currently under review right now. I actually finished the review. I just have to post the video. It fits perfectly. It plugs right in. Didn't have to change any of these connections around on the plug. And the plug, it fits perfectly inside here and you can see FPV no problem. And so what I did just to make it a little more versatile is I put some of this dual lock Velcro on there that kind of holds really good. And uh, the cool thing about this camera is you have the ability to pitch the lens not only down like this, straight, but also up. So if you're a fast FP FPV flyer, the X1 can pitch really a lot. In some cases, almost 90 degrees when you're flying in certain um, conditions. But um, if you wanted to, you can actually push this up even higher so that you can maintain level. So the way I mounted this was just basically putting this dual lock here on both, both sides and then just uh, going ahead and pushing it on. And it just locks in there just like that. And, and so you can, you can see how it is kind of pointed. The whole camera is kind of pointed up to the front. And that's kind of what you want for FPV flight. So if you turn it all the way down like this, if you push the camera all the way down like this, it actually is going level. So if you want slower flying and you're not gonna be going too fast and you want your camera level, you have that option. But if you're gonna be flying really fast and doing some kind of race type flying, point your camera up like this. So when you are flying fast and it's pitching way high like that, your camera is uh, still forward when you're flying and it's easier to fly. So I'm just gonna power this up real quick and show you guys how cool it is to just hook a camera up like this and have uh, FPV on your your X1. So I'm just powering on a set of FPV goggles here just to show you how this all works. And I'm gonna boot up the X1 here. And I already have it supposedly tuned to the right channel. So there we go. So we have uh, full on FPV on the X1 using this little makeshift uh, camera from a different quad. And we can see that um, there's a slight bit of lag just because this is a camera that you can also record on. It has an SD card in there. And these kinds of cameras do have a little bit of lag. So that's maybe about, about one to 200 milliseconds of lag. You can see that it's not instant response, but it's still a very good option uh, to be able to, to try FPV. You, don't, you probably don't wanna be doing this like in low light. You wanna have a really nice and sunny day just because this type of camera does get kind of dark and light. The dynamic range isn't very great with these kinds of cameras. But really light camera, I think this is only about um, all together, the whole package here with the transmitter on there um, is about, I think 10 grams or so with this whole package here. So it's not gonna add barely any weight at all onto your, onto your setup. If it does crash, you can see that the arms here are gonna hit first. The camera won't really be able to hit the ground. The legs will hit and the, the um, arms will hit before the camera hits. Maybe just the antenna a little bit will hit the ground. So a really good option. 
if you did want to put some kind of cheap FPV on here and you do have maybe some cameras laying around from some other cheap quad copters you have, this is definitely an option as long as uh, the plug is correct. I think the SEMA X5C FPV camera kit also fits. Again, this one is the FPV camera from the Lydia RC L6 hexacopter. But anyway, guys, just wanted to get that video out just so you guys could see kind of uh, what the capabilities are with the X1, how it's really easy to hook up any kind of cheap FPV and also um, this kind of light mod is very easy to do. Anybody can really do it. You don't have to do any soldering, any anything at all, just taking off the shell, moving the lights around a little bit so you can get much better lighting. And then even putting this on too, no soldering, just sticking some Velcro or this dual lock stuff on there, finding the camera that plugs in and uh, doing it very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and do a flight with this in another video and I'll have uh, the recording on the screen as well and then uh, some recording on here and how this thing does. This version here, this is one of the first versions of the X1 so it does have that little bit of yaw lag. I'm not sure how it's going to do with FPV but it should be fun nonetheless. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you like this review. I do a lot of reviews like this, mods, flight tests, reviews, all kinds of stuff. So check out the channel. I think you like it. But anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.